Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to a series of videos in which I'm reading you a book. We are reading the Gospel according to St. Matthew, and I'm drawing on from the Norton Critical Edition of the King James Bible. And we are up to chapter 11, chapter 10 having been consisted entirely of Jesus giving instructions to his disciples and sending them away. So now we are at chapter 11. And when it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John had heard of the pr in prison of the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he who should come, or do we look for another? This is John the Baptist, who apparently is not so far in prison that he can't talk with his disciples, and send them on errands. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. All those things are true, but John is not set free and transported magically into Egypt or Persia or America instead of facing execution. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what went ye out, out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the laws prophesied until John, and if and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which has come, which has for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, what do those with ears to hear hear? Naturally, that passage, the, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force was most infamously used by a hate preacher named Greg Locke, who said that, that the religious fundamentalists of his stripe would steal the country, would, would take it from everyone who isn't them. What does that passage mean? If you have ears to hear, what are you hearing? But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets, calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man come eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man is gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein the most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. In the context of this story, as far as we know, we aren't doing any biblical exegesis, no biblical history of any kind. Why is Jesus so mad? What is he seeing that he wishes he didn't see? Uh, at that time, Jesus answered and, sa and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hath revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. And neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son shall reveal him. Why? Aren't you here to change that? Why is that so? Babes don't understand what you're telling them. It's easy to talk to them, but they, they're receptive to anything you say, but they don't understand it. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Uh, and that ends the chapter. Uh, it's Jesus talking to the people. He does not have his disciples. 
Uh, there's no trouble so far, and as far as this chapter goes, John the Baptist is still alive, still able to communicate with his di disciples and send them out on errands. Uh, he, when Jesus is without his disciples, he's talking in a very Old Testament prophet kind of way, yelling and scourging cities, saying, you haven't been open-minded enough, you haven't opened yourself to the new teaching, you're doomed if you don't change your ways. Uh, I have to confess that uh, this verse was one of the original verses that bothered me a lot. Uh, I was raised in a Christian household, but I was never a Christian because I spent a lot of time with non-human animals who could play practical jokes on me and could have bad moods or get up on the wrong side of the bed and who could be very friendly and who could be endlessly loving, who were endlessly altruistic and self-sacrificing, some smarter than others, some dumber than others, some funnier than others, but not human, not one of them human and not one of them with even the faintest idea of a conception of something called religion. I grew, I grew up with them. I was able to see that, and that puts this into a, a, a perspective from which it cannot recover. Uh, but even so, even though that's the case, that final passage bothered me. Uh, because oxen wear yokes. Beasts of burden wear yokes. Why do you need a yoke? Why are you wearing a halter around your shoulder? Why is that? Because you're being driven at a plow, and when you're no longer any use, you'll be, you'll be killed. I, it bothered me. I, Jesus saying that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Why are you offering a yoke uh, at all? Uh, I know that I know that believing Christians fold this into uh, a Christology that 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 makes it all work. That makes it in fact glorious. I've heard that this explained many 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 times. Uh, nevertheless, it bugs me as as an image. It bugs me uh, to have someone say, "Well." If you, if you come to me, if you listen to my teaching, if, if you accept the imminence of the kingdom of heaven, it's not that I will free you. You will still be a beast of burden. But my yoke is light. You'll find it easy to bear. Not to say nothing of the fact that Jesus has made it clear that his yoke is not only not easy to bear, it's not only not light, it's the heaviest yoke of all. You'll be scorned, turned over to the magistrates, killed which is a pretty heavy yoke. <laughs> so we'll, this is him talking by himself. We'll see if the disciples come back and what happens then. We'll, we'll move on to the next chapter, uh, and I'll see you then. Thank you, Book 2.